after the smallpox by mary jones published in 1750 read for librivox.org when skilful traders first set up to draw the people to their shop they straight hang out some gaudy sign expressive of the goods within the vinter has his boy and grapes the haberdasher thread and tapes the shoemaker exposes boots and monmouth street old tattered suits so fares it with the nymph divine for what is beauty but a sign a face hung out through which is seen the nature of the goods within thus the coquette her bow ensnares with studied smiles and forward airs the graver prude hangs out a frown to strike the audacious gazer down but she alone whose temperate wit each nicer medium can hit is still adorned with every grace and wears a sample in her face what though envious folks have said that stella must now hide her head that all her stock of beauty's gone and even the very sign took down yet grieve not at the fatal blow for if you break a while we know tis bankrupt like more rich to grow a fairer sign you'll soon hang up and with fresh credit open shop for nature's pencil soon shall trace and once more finish off your face which all your neighbors shall outshine and of your mind remain the sign End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. April Love by Ernest Dowson Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter We have walked in love's land a little way, We have learnt his lesson a little while, And shall we not part at the end of day With a sigh, a smile? A little while in the shine of the sun we were twined together joined lips forgot how the shadows fall when the day is done and when love is not we have made no vows there will none be broke our love was free as the wind on the hill there was no word said we need wish unspoke we have wrought no ill so shall we not part at the end of day who have loved and lingered a little while Join lips for the last time, go our way, with a sigh, a smile. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. April Midnight by Arthur Simmons Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Side by side through the streets at midnight, Roaming together through the tumultuous night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gaslight, day's work over, how the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool the wind blows, fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing, after the heat and the fumes and the footlights where you dance and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here together, good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight, lover-like in a lover's gloaming. You the dancer and I the dreamer, children together, wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Azure and Gold by Amy Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira April 2016 April had covered the hills With flickering yellows and reds The sparkle and coolness of snow Was blown from the mountain beds Across a deep sunken stream The pink of blossoming trees And from windless apple blooms The humming of many bees the air was of rose and gold, arabesqued with the song of birds, who, swinging unseen under leaves, made music more eager than words. Of a sudden, aslant the road, a brightness to dazzle and stun, 
A glint of the bluest blue, a flash from a sapphire sun. Bluebirds so blue, twas a dream, an impossible, unconceived hue. The high sky of summer dropped down, some rapturous ocean to woo. Such a colour, such infinite light, the heart of a fabulous gem, many faceted, brilliant and rare, centre stone of the earth's diadem. Centre stone of the crown of the world, sincerity graved on your youth, and your eyes hold the bluebird flash, the sapphire shaft which is truth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. But Not To Me by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira April 2016 The April night is still and sweet With flowers on every tree Peace comes to them on quiet feet But not to me My peace is hidden in his breast Where I shall never be Love comes tonight to all the rest, but not to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The House with Nobody in It by Joyce Kilmer. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Whenever I walk to Suffern, Along the eerie track, I go by a poor old farmhouse with its shingles broken and black. I suppose I've passed it a hundred times, but I always stop for a minute and look at the house, the tragic house, the house with nobody in it. I never have seen a haunted house, but I hear there are such things that they hold the talk of spirits, their mirth and sorrowings. I know this house isn't haunted, and I wish it were, I do, for it wouldn't be so lonely if it had a ghost or two. This house on the road to Suffern needs a dozen panes of glass, and somebody ought to weed the walk and take a scythe to the grass. It needs new paint and shingles, and the vines should be trimmed and tied. But what it needs the most of all is some people living inside. If I had a lot of money and all my debts were paid, I'd put a gang of men to work with brush and saw and spade. I'd buy that place and fix it up the way it used to be. And I'd find some people who wanted a home and give it to them free. Now a new house, standing empty, with staring window and door, looks idle, perhaps, and foolish, like a hat on its block in the store. But there's nothing mournful about it. It cannot be sad and lone for the lack of something within it that it has never known. But a house that has done what a house should do, a house that has sheltered life, that has put its loving wooden arms around a man and his wife, a house that has echoed a baby's laugh and held up his stumbling feet, is the saddest sight when it's left alone that ever your eyes could meet. So whenever I go to Suffern along the eerie track, I never go by the empty house without stopping and looking back. Yet it hurts me to look at the crumbling roof and the shutters fallen apart, for I can't help thinking the poor old house is a house with a broken heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Love You by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Shakira April 2016 
When April bends above me and finds me fast asleep, Dust need not keep the secret a live heart died to keep. When April tells the thrushes, the meadow larks will know, And pipe the three words lightly to all the winds that blow. Above his roof the swallows, in notes like far-blown rain, Will tell the little sparrow beside his window-pane. O oh, sparrow, little sparrow, when I am fast asleep, Then tell my love the secret that I have died to keep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lady of Shalott by Alfred Lord Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter On either side the river lie Long fields of barley and of rye That clothe the wold and meet the sky And through the field the road runs by To many towered Camelot And up and down the people go Gazing where the lilies blow Round an island there below, the island of Shalott. Willows whiten, aspens quiver, Little breezes dusk and shiver, Through the wave that runs forever By the island in the river, Flowing down to Camelot. Four grey walls and four grey towers Overlook a space of flowers, And the silent isle embowers The Lady of Shalott. By the margin, willow veiled, slide the heavy barges trailed by slow horses, and unhailed the shallop flitteth silken sailed, skimming down to Camelot. But who hath seen her wave a hand, or at the casement seen her stand, or is she known in all the land, the Lady of Shalott? Only reapers, reaping early, in among the bearded barley, Hear a song that echoes cheerly from the river winding clearly, Down to towered Camelot. And by the moon the reaper weary, piling sheaves in uplands airy, Listening, whispers, "'Tis the fairy lady of Shalott. There she weaves by night and day A magic web with colours gay. She has heard a whisper say, A curse is on her if she stay, To look down to Camelot. She knows not what the curse may be, And so she weaveth steadily, And little other care hath she, The Lady of Shalott. And moving through a mirror clear That hangs before her all the year, Shadows of the world appear. There she sees a highway near, winding down to Camelot. There the river eddy whirls, and there the surly village churls, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shalott. Sometimes a troop of damsels glad, an abbot on an ambling pad, sometimes a curly shepherd lad, or long-haired page in crimson clad, goes by to towered Camelot. And sometimes through the mirror blue The knights come riding two and two She hath no loyal knight and true The Lady of Shalott But in her web she still delights To weave the mirror's magic sights For often through the silent nights A funeral with plumes and lights And music went to Camelot Or when the moon was overhead Came two young lovers lately wed I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. A bow shot from her bower eaves, He rode between the barley sheaves, The sun came dazzling through the leaves, And flamed upon the brazen greaves Of bold Sir Lancelot. A red cross knight forever kneeled To a lady in his shield, That sparkled on the yellow field Beside remote Shalott. The gemmy bridle glittered free, Like to some branch of stars we see, Hung in the golden galaxy. The bridle bells rang merrily As he rode down to Camelot, And from his blazoned baldric slung A mighty silver bugle hung, And as he rode his armor rung Beside remote Shalott. All in the blue unclouded weather Thick jeweled shone the saddle leather, 
the helmet and the helmet feather burned like one burning flame together as he rode down to camelot as often through the purple night below the starry clusters bright some bearded meteor trailing light moves over still shalott his broad clear brow in sunlight glowed on burnished hooves his war-horse trod from underneath his helmet flowed his coal-black curls as on he rode as he rode down to camelot from the bank and from the river he flashed into the crystal mirror tira lira by the river sang sir lancelot she left the web she left the loom she made three paces through the room she saw the water lily bloom she saw the helmet and the plume she looked down to camelot out flew the web and floated wide the mirror cracked from side to side the curse has come upon me cried the lady of shalott in the stormy east wind straining the pale yellow woods were waning the broad stream in his banks complaining heavily the low sky raining over towered camelot down she came and found a boat beneath a willow left afloat and round about the prow she wrote the lady of shalott and down the river's dim expanse like some bold seer in a trance seeing all his own mischance with a glassy countenance did she look to camelot and at the closing of the day she loosed the chain and down she lay the broad stream bore her far away the lady of shalott lying robed in snowy white that loosely flew to left and right the leaves upon her falling light through the noises of the night she floated down to camelot and as the boat had wound along the willowy hills and fields among they heard her singing her last song the lady of shalott heard a carol mournful holy chanted loudly chanted lowly till her blood was frozen slowly and her eyes were darkened wholly turned to towered camelot for ere she reached upon the tide the first house by the waterside singing in her song she died the lady of shalott under tower and balcony by garden wall and gallery a gleaming shape she floated by dead pale between the houses high silent into camelot out upon the wharfs they came knight and burgher lord and dame and round the prow they read her name the lady of shalott who is this and what is here and in the lighted palace near died the sound of royal cheer and they crossed themselves for fear all the knights at camelot but lancelot mused a little space he said she has a lovely face god in his mercy lend her grace the lady of shalott end of poem this recording is in the public domain lions on a little bird by john carr Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Lines on a Little Bird, Singing at the Window of the Author, Soon after the death of a beloved sister. Go, little flutterer, seek thy feathered loves, And leave a wretched mourner to his woe. Seek out the bowers of bliss, seek happier groves, Nor here unheeded let thy music flow. Yet think me not ungrateful for thy song, If meant to cheer me in my lone retreat. Ah, not to thee, my little friend, belong the powers to soothe the pangs of adverse fate. Fly, then, the window of the wretched, fly, and be thy harmless life for ever blessed. I only can reward thee with a sigh, and wish that joys may crown thy peaceful nest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Main Street by Joyce Kilmer Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk
I like to look at the blossomy track of the moon upon the sea, but it isn't half so fine a sight as Main Street used to be, when it was all covered over with a couple of feet of snow, and over the crisp and radiant road the ringing sleighs would go. Now Main Street, bordered with autumn leaves, it was a pleasant thing, and its gutters were gay with dandelions early in the spring. I like to think of it white with frost or dusty in the heat, because I think it is humaner than any other street. A city street that is busy and wide is ground by a thousand wheels, and a burden of traffic on its breast is all it ever feels. It is dully conscious of weight and speed and of work that never ends, but it cannot be human like Main Street and recognize its friends. There were only about a hundred teams on Main Street in a day, and twenty or thirty people, I guess, and some children out to play. And there wasn't a wagon or buggy or a man or a girl or a boy that Main Street didn't remember and somehow seemed to enjoy. The truck and the motor and trolley car and the elevated train, they make the weary city reverberate with pain. But there is yet an echo, left deep down within my heart, of the music the Main Street cobblestones made, beneath a butcher's cart. God be thanked for the Milky Way that runs across the sky. That's the path that my feet would tread whenever I have to die. Some folks call it a silver sword, and some a pearly crown. But the only thing I think it is, is Main Street. Heaven Town. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Maldive Shark by Herman Melville. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. About the shark, phlegmatical one. Pale sought of the Maldive sea, the sleek little pilot fish, azure and slim, how alert in attendance be. From his saw pit mouth, from his charnel of maw, the have nothing of harm to dread, but liquidly glide on his ghastly flank, or before his gorgonian head, or lurk in the port of serrated teeth in white triple tiers of glittering gates and there find a haven when perils abroad an asylum and jaws of the fates they are friends and friendly they guide him to pray yet never partake of the treat eyes and brains to the dotard lethargic and dull pale ravener of horrible meat end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Memorial Day by Joyce Kilmer Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Dulce at decorum est The bugle echoes shrill and sweet But not of war it sings today The road is rhythmic with the feet of men-at-arms who come to pray. The roses blossom, white and red, on tombs where weary soldiers lie. Flags wave above the honored dead, and martial music cleaves the sky. Above their wreath-strewn graves we kneel. They kept the faith and fought the fight. Through flying lead and crimson steel, they plunged for freedom and the right may we their grateful children learn their strength who lie beneath this sod who went through fire and death to earn at last the accolade of god in shining rank on rank arrayed they march the legions of the lord he is their captain unafraid the prince of peace who brought a sword End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The Music Lesson by Matilda Blind Read for LibriVox.org by Kalinda A thrush alit on a young-leaved spray, And lightly clinging it rocked in its singing, As the rapturous notes rose loud and gay, And with liquid shakes and trills and breaks Rippled through blossoming bough of May. Like a ball of fluff with a warm brown throat And throbbing bosom mid the apple blossom, the new-fledged nestling sat learning by rote to echo the song so tender and strong as it feebly put in its frail little note. O blissfullest lesson amid the green grove, the low wind crispeth the leaves where lispeth the shy little bird with its parent above, two voices that mingle and make but a single hymn of rejoicing in praise of their love. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Night by William Blake Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Night The sun descending in the west, The evening star does shine. The birds are silent in their nest, And I must seek for mine. The moon, like a flower, In heaven's high bower, With silent delight, sits and smiles on the night farewell green fields and happy groves where flocks have took delight where lambs have nibbled silent moves the feet of angels bright unseen they pour blessing and joy without ceasing on each bud and blossom and each sleeping bosom they look in every thoughtless nest where birds are covered warm they visit caves of every beast to keep them all from harm if they see any weeping that should have been sleeping, they pour sleep on their head and sit down by their bed. When wolves and tigers howl for prey, they pitying stand and weep, seeking to drive their thirst away and keep them from the sheep. But if they rush dreadful, the angels, most heedful, receive each mild spirit new worlds to inherit. And there the lion's ruddy eyes shall flow with tears of gold and pitying the tender cries and walking round the fold saying wrath by his meekness and by his health sickness is driven away from our immortal day and now beside thee bleating lamb i can lie down and sleep or think on him who bore thy name graze after thee and weep for washed in life's river my bright mane forever shall shine like the gold as i guard over the fold End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pleiades by Arthur Adams. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. Last night I saw the Pleiades again, faint as a drift of steam from some tall chimney stack. And I remembered you as you were then, awoke dead worlds of dream and time turned slowly back. I saw the Pleiades through branches bare, and close to mine your face soft glowing in the dark, for youth and hope and love in you were there at our dear trysting place, in that bleak London park. And as we kissed, the Pleiades looked down from their immeasurable aloofness in cold space, do you remember how a last leaf brown between us flickering fell soft on your upturned face? Last night I saw the Pleiades again, here in the alien south, where no leaves fade at all. And I remembered you as you were then, and felt upon my mouth your leaf-light kisses fall. The Pleiades remember and look down on me made old with grief, who then a young god stood, when you, now lost and trampled by the town, a lone wind-driven leaf, were young and sweet and good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Power of Fancy by Philip Freneau. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. The Power of Fancy 
by philip Fernand. wakeful vagrant restless thing ever wandering on the wing who thy wondrous source can find fancy regent of the mind a spark from jove's resplendent throne but thy nature all unknown this spark of bright celestial flame from jove's seraphic altar came and hence alone in man we trace resemblance to the immortal race ah what is all this mighty whole these suns and stars that round us roll what are they all where'er they shine but fancies of the power divine what is this globe these lands and seas and heat and cold and flowers and trees and life and death and beast and man and time that with the sun began but thoughts on reason scale combined ideas of the almighty mind on the surface of the brain night after night she walks unseen noble fabrics doth she raise in the woods or on the seas on some high steep pointed rock where the billows loudly knock and the dreary tempests sweep clouds along the uncivil deep lo she walks upon the moon listens to the chimey tune of the bright harmonious spheres and the song of angels hears sees this earth a distant star a pendant floating in the air leads me to some lonely dome where religion loves to come where the bride of jesus dwells and the deep-tongued organ swells in notes with lofty anthems joined notes that half distract the mind now like lightning she descends to the prison of the fiends hears the rattling of their chains feels their never-ceasing pains but oh never may she tell half the frightfulness of hell now she views arcadian rocks where the shepherds guard their flocks and while yet her wings she spreads sees crystal streams and coral beds wanders to some desert deep or some dark enchanted steep by the full moonlight doth shew forest of a dusky blue where upon some mossy bed innocence reclines her head swift she stretches o'er the seas to the far-off hebrides canvas on the lofty mast could not travel half so fast swifter than the eagle's flight or instantaneous rays of light lo contemplative she stands on norwegia's rocky lands fickle goddess set me down where the rugged winters frown upon orca's howling steep nodding o'er the northern deep where the wind's tumultuous roar vexed that ossian sings no more fancy to that land repair sweetest ossian's slumbers there waft me far to southern isles where the softened winter smiles to bermuda's orange shades or demarabra's lovely glades bear me o'er the sounding cape painting death in every shape where daring anson spread the sail shattered by the stormy gale lo she leads me wide and far sense can never follow her shape the course o'er land and sea help me to keep pace with thee lead me to yon chalky cliff over rock and over reef into britain's fertile land stretching far her proud command look back and view through many a year caesar julius caesar there now to tempe's verdant wood over the mid-ocean flood lo the islands of the sea sappho lesbos mourns for thee greece arouse thy humbled head where are all thy mighty dead whose states to endless ruin hurled and carry vengeance through the world troy thy vanished pomp resume or weeping at thy hector's tomb yet those faded scenes renew whose memory is to homer due fancy leave me wandering still up to ida's cloud-topped hill not a laurel there doth grow but in vision thou shalt show every sprig 
on virgil's tomb shall in livelier colors bloom and every triumph rome has seen flourish on the years between now she bears me far away in the east to meet the day leads me over ganges streams mother of the morning beams or the ocean hack she ran places me on tenian farther farther in the east till it almost meets the west let us wandering both be lost on taitis sea-beat coast bear me from that distant strand over ocean over land to california's golden shore fancy stop and rove no more now though late returning home lead me to belinda's tomb let me glide as well with you through the shroud and coffin too and behold a moment there all that once was good and fair who doth here so soundly sleep shall we break this prison deep thunders cannot wake the maid lightnings cannot pierce the shade and though wintry tempests roar tempests shall disturb no more yet must those eyes in darkness stay that once were rivals to the day like heaven's bright lamp beneath the main they are but set to rise again fancy though the muses pride in thy painted realms reside endless images of things fluttering each on golden wings ideal objects such as store the universe could hold no more fancy to thy power i owe half my happiness below by the elysian groves were made thine were the notes that orpheus played by thee was pluto charmed so well while rapture seized the sons of hell come oh come perceive it by none you and i will walk alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain socrates by frederick william faber read for librivox dot org socrates quote, of making many books there is no end and much reading is a weariness of the flesh end quote. thou mighty heathen wert not so bereft of heavenly helps to thy great-hearted deeds that thou shouldst dig for truths in broken creeds mid the loose sands of four old empires left motions and shadows dimly glowing fell on thy broad soul from forms invisible with its plain grandeur simple calm and free what wonder was it that thy life should merit sparkles of grace and angel ministry with jealous glimpses of the world of spirit greatest and best in this that thy pure mind upon its saving mission all intent scorned the untruth of leaving books behind to claim for thine what through thy lips was sent end of poem this recording is in the public domain song of marion's men by william cullen bryant read for librivox dot org by ross clayta april twenty third two k sixteen roebuck south carolina song of marion's men our band is few but true and tried our leader frank bold the british soldier trembles when marion's name is told our fortress is the good greenwood our tent the cypress tree we know the forest round us as seamen know the sea we know its walls of thorny vines its glades of reedy grass its safe and silent islands within the dark morass woe to the english soldiery that little dread us near on them shall light at midnight a strange and sudden fear when waking to their tents on fire they grasp their arms in vain and they who stand to face us are beat to earth again and they who fly in terror deem a mighty host behind and hear the tramp of thousands upon the hollow wind then sweet the hour that brings release from danger and from toil we talk the battle over and share the battle's spoil the woodland rings with laugh and shout 
as if a hunt were up and woodland flowers are gathered to crown the soldier's cup with merry songs we mock the wind that in the pine-top grieves and slumber long and sweetly on beds of oaken leaves well knows the fair and friendly moon the band that marion leads the glitter of their rifles the scampering of their steeds tis life to guide the fiery barb across the moonlit plain tis life to feel the night wind that lifts its tossing mane a moment in the british camp a moment and away back to the pathless forest before the peep of day grave men there are by broad santee grave men with hoary hairs their hearts are all with marion for marion are their prayers and lovely ladies greet our band with kindliest welcoming with smiles like those of summer and tears like those of spring for them we wear these trusty arms and lay them down no more till we have driven the briton for ever from our shore end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet one hundred and sixteen by william shakespeare read for librivox dot org by tony addison let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove oh no it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken it is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown although his height be taken loves not time's fool the rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come love alters not with his brief hours and weeks but bears it out even to the edge of doom if this be error and upon me proved i never writ nor no man ever loved end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain Sonnet thirty by William Shakespeare read for LibriVox dot org by Tony Addison When to the sessions of sweet silent thought I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, and with old woes new wild my dear times waste. Then can I drown an eye unused to flow For precious friends hid in death's dateless night And weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe And moan the expense of many a vanished sight Then can I grieve at grievances foregone And heavily from woe to woe tell o'er The sad account of for bemoaned moan which I knew pay as if not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, all losses are restored, and sorrows end. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 73 by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Addison That time of year thou mayest in me behold When yellow leaves, or none of you, do hang Upon those boughs which shake against the cold Bare ruined choirs, where late the sweet birds sang in me thou seest the twilight of such day as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, 
death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereon it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sonnet four by Francesco Petrarch, read for LibriVox.org. Doth any maiden seek the glorious fame of chastity, of strength, of courtesy? Gaze in the eyes of that sweet enemy whom all the world doth as my lady name. How honor grows and pure devotions flame. How truth is joined with graceful dignity. There thou mayest learn, and what the path may be to that high heaven which doth her spirit claim. There learn that speech beyond all poet's skill, and sacred silence, and those holy ways unutterable, untold by human heart but the infinite beauty that all eyes doth fill this none can learn because its lovely rays are given by god's pure grace and not by art end of poem this recording is in the public domain spring's bedfellow by william morris read for librivox .org by newgate novelist Spring went about the woods to-day, the soft-foot winter thief, and found where idle sorrow lay, twixt flower and faded leaf. She looked on him and found him fair for all she had been told. She knelt her down beside him there and sang of days of old. His open eyes beheld her not, yet gan his lips to move. But life and deeds were in her thought, and he would sing of love. So sang they till their eyes did meet, and faded fear and shame. More bold he grew, and she more sweet, until they sang the same. Until, say they who know the thing, their very lips did kiss, and sorrow laid a bed with spring, begat an earthly bliss. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Stand by the Engines by Henry Lawson Read for LibriVox.org by Son of the Exiles On the moonlighted decks there are children at play While smoothly the steamer is holding her way And the old folks are chatting on deck seats and chairs And the lads and the lassies go strolling in pairs some gaze half entranced on the beautiful sea and wonder perhaps if a vision it be and surely their journey's no sorrow nor care for wealth love and beauty are passengers there but down underneath mid the coal dust that smears the face and the hands work the ship's engineers whate'er be the duty of others tis theirs to stand by their engines whatever occurs the sailor may gaze on the sea and the sky, The sailor may tell when the danger is nigh, But when death his black hand o'er the waters uprears, Unseen he is met by the ship's engineers. They are thrown from their feet by the force of a shock, They know that their vessel has struck on a rock. Now stand by your engines when danger appears, For all may depend on the ship's engineers no thought of their danger no mad rush on deck they stand at their posts in the hull of a wreck firm hands on the valves and the white steam appears and down with their ship go the brave engineers end of poem this recording is in the public domain Stars by Sarah Teasdale, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Stars 
Alone in the night on a dark hill, with pines around me, spicy and still, and a heaven full of stars over my head, white and topaz and misty red, myriads with beating hearts of fire that eons cannot vex or tire. Up the dome of heaven, like a great hill, I watch them marching stately and still, and I know that I am honoured to be witness of so much majesty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Surrender by Ella Willa Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Surrender Love, when we met, t'was like two planets meeting. Strange chaos followed, body, soul, and heart. Seemed shaken, thrilled, and startled by thy greeting. Old ties, old dreams, old aims, all torn apart. And wretched away left nothing there the while, But the great shining glory of your smile. I knew no past, t'was all a blurred bleak waste. I ask no future, t'was a blinding glare. I only saw the present as men taste some stimulating wine and lose all care i tasted love's elixir and i seemed dwelling in some strange land like one who dreamed it was a godlike separate existence our world was set apart in some fair clime i had no will no purpose no resistance i only knew i loved you for all time the earth seemed something foreign and afar and we too sovereigns dwelling in a star it is so sad so strange i almost doubt that all those years could be before we met do you not wish that we could blot them out obliterate them wholly and forget that we had any part in life until we clasp each other with love's rapture thrill my being trembled to its very centre at that first kiss, cold reason stood aside, with folded arms to let a grand love enter, in my soul's secret chamber to abide, its great high priest, my first love and my last, there on its altar I consumed my past, and all my life I lay upon its shrine, the best emotions of my heart and brain, whatever gifts and graces may be mine, no secret thought, no memory I retain, but I give them all for dear love's precious sake, complete surrender of the whole I make. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Three and One by Ella Willa Wilcox Read for LibriVox.org by Chris Three and One Sometimes she seems so helpless and so mild, so full of sweet unreason and so weak, so prone to some capricious whim or freak, now gay, now tearful, and now anger-wild. By her strange moods of waywardness beguiled, and entertained I stroke her pretty cheek, and soothing words of peace and comfort speak, and love her as a father loves a child. Sometimes when I am troubled and so oppressed, on every side by fast advancing care, she rises up with such majestic air. I deem her some Olympian goddess guest, who brings my heart new courage, hope, and rest. In her brave eyes dwells balm for my despair, and then I seem while fondly gazing there, a loving child upon my mother's breast. Again, when her warm veins are full of life, and youth's volcanic tidal wave of fire, Sends the swift mercury of her pulses higher, Her beauty stirs my heart to maddening strife, And all the tiger in my blood is rife, I love her with a lover's fierce desire, And find in her my dream complete entire, Child, mother, mistress, all in one word, wife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
To One in Paradise by Edgar Allan Poe, read for LibriVox.org by Marissa Parker, March 29th, 2016, Enon Valley, Pennsylvania. Thou wast all to me, love, for which my soul did pine, a green isle in the sea, love, a fountain and a shrine, all wreathed with fairy fruits and flowers, and all the flowers were mine. Ah, dream too bright to last, ah, starry hope that didst arise but to be overcast a voice out from the future cries on on but over the past dim gulf my spirit hovering lies mute motionless aghast for alas alas with me the light of life is over no more no more no more such language holds the solemn seas to the sands upon the shore shall bloom the thunder blasted tree where the stricken eagles soar, and all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy gray eye glances, and where thy footsteps gleams, and what ethereal dances, by what eternal streams. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. We are seven by William Wordsworth, read for LibriVox.org by Marwa Khalouf. Damascus, Syria, 2016. A simple child that lightly draws its breath and feels its life in every limb. What should it know of death? I met a little cottage girl. She was eight years old, she said. Her hair was thick with many a curl that clustered round her head. She had a rustic woodland air and she was wildly clad. Her eyes were fair, and very fair, her beauty made me glad. Sisters and brothers, little maid, how many may you be? How many? Seven in all, she said, and wondering looked at me. And where are they? I pray you tell, she answered. Seven are we, and two of us at Conway dwell, and two are gone to sea. Two of us in the churchyard lie, my sister and my brother, and in the churchyard cottage I dwell near them with my mother. You say that two at Conway dwell, and two are gone to see, yet you are seven? I pray you tell, sweet maid, how this may be. Then did the little maid reply, Seven boys and girls are we. Two of us in the churchyard lie, Beneath the churchyard tree. You run about, my little maid. Your limbs, they are alive. If two are in the churchyard laid, then you are only five. Their graves are green, they may be seen, the little maid replied. Twelve steps or more from my mother's door, and they are side by side. My stockings there I often knit, my kerchief there I hem. And there upon the ground I sit, and sing a song to them. And often after sunset, sir, when it's light and fair, I take my little porringer and eat my supper there. The first that died was Sister Jane. In bed she moaning lay, till God released her of her pain. And then she went away. So in the churchyard she was laid. And when the grass was dry, together round her grave we played. My brother John and I, and when the ground was white with snow, and I could run and slide, my brother John was forced to go, and he lies by her side. How many are you then? said I, if they two are in heaven. Quick was the little maid's reply, Oh, master, we are seven. But they are dead, those two are dead, their spirits are in heaven was throwing words away, for still the little maid would have her will, and say, Nay, we are seven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Windflower Leaf by Carl Sandburg Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug this flower is repeated out of old winds, out of old times. The wind repeats these, 
it must have these over and over again. Oh, windflowers so fresh, oh, beautiful leaves, here now again. The domes over fall to pieces, the stones under fall to pieces, rain and ice wreck the works. The wind keeps, the windflowers keep, the leaves last. The wind young and strong lets these last longer than stones. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Woodpile by Robert Frost. Read for LibriVox.org by Joseph Bjork. Out walking in the frozen swamp one gray day, I paused and said, I will turn back from here. No, I will go on farther, and we shall see. The hard snow held me, save where now and then one foot went down. The view was all in lines, straight up and down, of tall, slim trees, too much alike to mark or name a place by, so as to say for certain I was here, or somewhere else. I was just far from home. A small bird flew before me. He was careful to put a tree between us when he lighted and say no word to tell me who he was, who was so foolish as to think what he thought. He thought that I was after him for a feather, the white one in his tail, like one who takes everything said as personal to himself. One flight out sideways would have undeceived him. And then there was a pile of wood, for which I forgot him, and let his little fear carry him off the way I might have gone, without so much as wishing him good night. He went behind it to make his last stand. It was a cord of maple, cut and split, and piled and measured, four by four by eight, and not another like it could I see. No runner tracks in this year's snow loops near it, and it was older sure than this year's cutting, or even last year's, or the years before. The wood was gray, and the bark warping off it, and the pile somewhat sunken. Clematis had wound strings round and round it like a bundle. What held it, though, on one side was a tree, still growing, and on one a stake and prop, these latter about to fall. I thought that only someone who lived in turning to fresh tasks could so forget his handiwork, on which he spent himself, the labor of his axe, and leave it there far from a useful fireplace to warm the frozen swamp as best it could with the slow, smokeless burning of decay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.